Welcome to another lesson on investigating geometry. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define inductive reasoning, define deductive reasoning, and give examples of both. Hi, I'm Eloise, and once again we have Sharon with us. Hi Sharon, what are you up to today? I'm at home filling a glossary in my toolkit, you know, of things that we've learned so far. It also looks like you're sticking in pictures. Mm -hmm. See, I noticed that the more information I put in here, the easier it becomes for me to find things and look them up. That's excellent. Well, since you've got your toolkit there, can you remind us what the word geometry means? Um, let's see. Oh, here it is. Geometry literally means the measurement of the earth or land. Well done. And of course, we all know that geometry is all about shapes. But for the rest of this series, we're going to focus more on another aspect of Euclidean geometry, the reasoning side of it. But what is reasoning? Reasoning is the way or process we follow in order to reach a conclusion. And we don't only use it in mathematics, we use it every day in everything we do. Let's watch this young guy and see if you can identify the process of reasoning taking place. This young guy and see if you can identify the process of reasoning taking place. Um, excuse me, do you perhaps have the time? I think it's about quarter past two. Thanks. Sure. Hey, Gerard. Hey. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm so good. What are you doing around here? I'm waiting for Ran first. Yeah. You know, we're supposed to have an audition inside, but it doesn't look like he's making it. What would make you say that? Well, we're supposed to meet you at 2 o'clock, mm -hmm. but it's already caught the pass. So I don't think we're going to make the audition. Gerard looks pretty disappointed, doesn't he? He's decided his mate, Ranfus, is not going to show up. How did he reach that conclusion? Let's look at his reasoning. He knows three facts. One, they had agreed to meet at two o'clock. Two, it is now quarter past two. Three, the auditions are about to start and Ranfus is still not there. Therefore, he concludes, and that's a very important word in maths, Ranfus is not coming. Let's see what happens next. Maybe he's having transport problems or something. Renfus, late. I don't think so. Gerard, there's always a first time for everything, remember? Have you even been inside to look for him? He's probably in there waiting for you or something. I doubt it. What time were the two of you supposed to meet in the first place? Two o'clock. Two o'clock? Then what are you stressing about, Gerard? It's only five to two. You've got a whole five minutes left. And I am sure that my time is right. I always check it with the radio before I leave in the morning. Anyway, I'm kind of like in a hurry, so I'll have to see you around, eh? Oh, wish you luck, eh? Thanks. Bye. Now this changes things completely, doesn't it? Two points have been raised which are very important when it comes to reasoning. First of all, the facts on which we base our conclusions must be correct. If we have the wrong facts, the conclusions are likely to be wrong. Let's see where Gerard was given the wrong information or facts. Notice that the passerby didn't look at his watch. He guessed that it was quarter past two and it turned out to be wrong by 20 minutes. In fact, Ranfus had another five minutes to arrive on time. Secondly, not all reasoning leads to correct conclusions. 
The fact that Ranfus has never been late before doesn't prove that he won't be late in the future. He might have already been inside or he might have had problems getting there. This is the kind of intuitive reasoning that we do all the time. But do you see how easily we can reach wrong conclusions if we're not careful? I must admit, I've done it as well. In maths, we use other kinds of reasoning. And today, we're going to use two of them, inductive and deductive reasoning. So let's start with inductive reasoning. Sharon, are you ready to do some thinking? I'll have a go. Here are some patterns for you to work on. What are the next three numbers in this sequence? 1, 4, 9, 16. Um, that wasn't too difficult. I think the next numbers are 25, 36 and 49. That's excellent. How did you work it out? See, here we have 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, um, 4 squared. So it seems logical that the next numbers could be 5 squared, which is 25, 6 squared, which is 36, and 7 squared, which is 49. Very good. Look at the thinking that went into this. We looked for a pattern in the numbers, something that linked them together. Using that pattern, we saw what the next number should be. Then we continued using that pattern to get 25, 36 and 49. Now how about this one? What shape do we need to complete this sequence and what color should it be? So, what did you decide on? I think it should be a regular pentagon. A five-sided shape with all equal sides. And the color should be red. Excellent! The pattern started with an octagon with eight equal sides. Then there's a heptagon with seven equal sides, followed by a hexagon with six equal sides. So the next one must have five equal sides, and that, of course, is a pentagon. And since the colors are blue, red, blue, the pentagon must be red. Okay, Sharon, here's one more. Study this table of temperatures. What do you think the temperature will be in Tuane on day four? Hmm, uh, I can't seem to figure this out. Okay, let me help. Did you notice that the temperature in Tuane is 3 degrees warmer than in Johannesburg for days 1, 2 and 3? So, what temperature do you think it'll be in Tuane on day 4? I get it. It would probably also be 3 degrees warmer than in Johannesburg. So the answer would be 25 degrees Celsius. Well done. But do you agree that the answer to this example is not as convincing as the other two? On day four in Tuane, something unexpected could cause the temperature to be much colder or much hotter than what we predicted. Now, all of these were examples of inductive reasoning. When we see something happening again and again, we see a pattern in what is happening then we can assume that what we have seen so far will continue to happen. In other words, inductive reasoning is the process of arriving at a rule or a generalization based on a number of specific observations and assumptions. As we saw in our first example where we continue to square numbers. Another way of putting it is to say that we assume that what has happened in the past will continue to happen in the future. We all use inductive reasoning every day. And a lot of people use it when they try to tell what the weather is going to be like. Farmers the world over have been doing it for centuries. Over the years they notice that whenever the wind blows from a certain direction it rains the next day. 
So the next time the wind blows from that direction, they use inductive reasoning and say to themselves, ah, it's going to rain tomorrow. Tomorrow it is going to rain is a conjecture, a statement that seems to be true, but it hasn't been proved yet. We used inductive reasoning to make this conjecture. But the weather forecast is not always right. I mean, I can't remember how many times I haven't taken a jersey because they said it's going to be sunny or clear, and I've always ended up freezing. You're right. And it only takes one time when it doesn't work for us to see that it doesn't have a valid conclusion. But in the example of the square numbers, it seems to be valid. Can you see the conclusions made from inductive reasoning are valid in some cases, but not valid in other cases? This inductive reasoning is useful to us both in mathematics and in the decisions we make in our daily lives. But we also want to find a reasoning that will give us guaranteed results. In maths, we need reasoning that works in every case and always arrives at valid conclusions. In other words, reasoning that proves your conjecture. There is nothing left to doubt. This form of reasoning is called deductive reasoning. It is based on true statements that we call premises. Euclidean geometry uses deductive reasoning. As long as the premises or statements made are true, the conclusions are always valid. This reasoning is not new to you. Sharon? Yeah? Answer this quickly. Is 28 an even number? Of course it is. Easy, wasn't it? You used deductive reasoning. Let's look at how this reasoning could be written to show the deductive argument. Our first premise is that all numbers that can be divided by 2, except for 0, are even numbers. Our next premise is that 28 can be divided by 2. Therefore, the conclusion is that 28 is an even number. That's obvious. So, in deductive reasoning, we reach conclusions that are based on premises. Remember, a premise is a statement which we know to be true already. So the logic used to move from the premise to the conclusion must make sense. We say that the logic must be sound. Here's something to think about. Is the following true or false? All multiples of 4 are also multiples of 2. 18 is a multiple of 2, therefore 18 is a multiple of 4. Is this conclusion true or not? Does the reasoning make sense to you? If you're not sure, look at the conclusion. Is 18 a multiple of 4? No. 16 and 20 are multiples of 4, but 18 is not. So, what went wrong? I mean, think about it. All multiples of 4 are multiples of 2. But that doesn't mean that all multiples of 2 are multiples of 4. Think of it like this. 18 is a multiple of 2, but not a multiple of 4. You're right, Sharon. First, let's check the premises. Are they true? Yes. All multiples of 4 are multiples of 2, and 18 is a multiple of 2. But the conclusion is false. The logic used to get from the premises to the conclusion here was not sound. It did not make sense. Euclidean geometry relies upon deductive reasoning. The premises are true statements that include the theorems. For the conclusion to be valid, the premises must be true. That is why it is so important to know the theorems. Sharon, are you ready to do another example? Bring it. Here is an example of deductive reasoning in Euclidean geometry. Sharon, use deductive reasoning to find the size of angle CMB. That's easy. Angle CMB is 132 degrees. 
Brilliant! You saw the answer straight away. But what you don't realize is all the steps of reasoning you used. Premise 1. Angle AMD is 132 degrees. Premise 2. Angles AMD and CMB are vertically opposite. Premise 3. Vertically opposite angles are equal. Conclusion. Angles AMD and CMB are equal to each other. Now we can arrive at the conclusion. Angle CMB equals 132 degrees. Wow. Did I go through all of that before I answered? I didn't realize my brain worked so fast. Euclidean geometry is not the only part of maths that uses deductive reasoning. We sometimes prove theorems in coordinate geometry and transformation geometry using deductive reasoning. As you study mathematics, watch how often you use both types of reasoning, deductive and inductive. During this and the next series of lessons, we're going to practice using inductive reasoning to make conjectures and then deductive reasoning to prove or disprove the conjectures. We will use all three kinds of geometry you've studied so far. What I find incredible is that even the way we think, sometimes instinctively, has been studied and given a name. That's life. Just when we think we've discovered something new, we find out somebody, somewhere, has done it all before. Okay, let's go through what we've learned today. Okay, inductive reasoning is the process of coming to conclusions based on things that have happened before and the assumptions we make about them. The conclusion could be valid or it could not be valid. We use this reasoning to make conjectures. In deductive reasoning, we can draw valid conclusions from premises that are true. We must use sound logic to move from the premises to the conclusion. The conclusion will always be true if the premises are true and the logic is sound. So, we use deductive reasoning to prove or disprove conjectures. Now it's time for your task. Here are some premises and conclusions for you to debate with your class. Philosophers and mathematicians the world over have argued about these sort of conclusions for years. So you don't have to reach agreement, but you must be able to explain your reasons for saying a conclusion is valid or not. All of the premises are true. Decide whether the conclusions are valid or not. 1. Triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle. Angle A equals 100 degrees. Therefore, angle B equals 40 degrees. 2. Angle X is greater than 90 degrees. Angle Y is greater than 90 degrees. Therefore, angle X equals angle Y. 3. All A is B. All C is A. Therefore, all C is B. Well, that's it from me. See you next time. Cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs>